An illiterate farmer from one of the poorest countries on Earth walks into the United States Capitol building. He is wearing a long brown smock. He doesn't speak English. He is about to address members of Congress and a room full of international agricultural experts about how to save millions of people from starvation. His name is Yakuba Sawadogo, and 30 years earlier, his own neighbors called him a madman. They set his fields on fire to stop him, because Yakuba was digging holes, thousands of them, in the middle of the worst drought in 200 years. When everyone else was fleeing their villages to survive, he was returning to his. When agronomists with PhDs could not figure out how to stop the Sahara Desert from swallowing West Africa, this peasant farmer with a shovel did it anyway. Between 1972 and 1984, the Sahel region of Africa experienced droughts so catastrophic that rainfall dropped by 80%. 100,000 people starved to death. Tens of millions fled their homes. The desert was advancing. Scientists predicted the entire region would become uninhabitable. The ground turned to hard pan, soil so compacted that plows couldn't break it. When rain did fall, it ran off the surface like concrete. The Western response was predictable. Agricultural experts flew in from Europe and America. They brought tractors. They brought chemical fertilizers. They brought irrigation systems. They spent billions of dollars. None of it worked. Because the Sahel has a fundamental problem that modern agriculture can't solve. When the soil crusts over, water cannot penetrate. Chemical fertilizers don't fix this. Tractors don't fix this. In fact, heavy machinery makes it worse, compacting the soil even more. But there was a technique that did work. It had worked for centuries. And in 1980, one man decided to remember it. Jacoba Sawadogo. While everyone else was fleeing the Sahel, Jacoba picked up a shovel. As a child, he had been sent to a Quranic school in Mali. He was a poor student. But the school's sheikh told him that he would become an important leader someday. When he returned home as a young man, he opened a market stall. He was successful. He had a future in business. And then the droughts came. While everyone else fled for the cities, Yakuba went back to the land. He started farming in the middle of the worst drought in living memory. His neighbors told him that a man who digs holes is as useful as a man who hangs himself. Because Yakuba was not digging during the rainy season, he was digging in the dry season, when the ground was hardest, when it seemed most pointless. He was using an ancient technique called Zai, he changed it. He made the pits bigger, and he dug deeper. And then he did something that made people certain he had lost his mind. He filled each pit with a handful of manure, and he waited. The manure attracted termites. The termites burrowed into the soil beneath the pits to get the organic matter. Their tunnels broke up the hard pan. They aerated the soil. They created a natural irrigation network deep underground. When the rains finally came, Yakuba's pits caught every drop. The water did not run off. It sank deep into the ground, up to 125 centimeters. In the flat, untreated land next door, water only penetrated 60 centimeters. His crops survived. His neighbor's crops died and they hated him for it. Traditional land chiefs said he was violating the natural order. They ostracized him. Someone even set his forest on fire. But Yakuba did not stop. He replanted. He dug more pits. He added stone lines to slow water runoff. He started planting trees in the pits. By the 1990s, the forest had grown. By the 2000s, it was undeniable. He had 40 hectares of thriving woodland where there had been nothing but barren desert. Wildlife returned, animals that had not been seen in the region for generations. And then the farmers started coming back. 
They organized markets to share seeds. They copied his technique. In 1989, 13 farmers from Niger visited Yakuba's fields. They went home and started digging. When the next drought hit in 1990, only the Zai farmers had a harvest. The numbers were impossible to dismiss. Crop yields increased by 100 to 500 percent. Groundwater levels rose by an average of 5 meters. In some locations, wells gained 17 meters of water. Villages that had gone eight months a year without water suddenly had it year-round. In 2019, when a catastrophic drought killed 72% of the corn across the region, farmers using Zai still had enough food to survive. Dr. Chris Rage, a scientist at the World Resources Institute, said that Yakuba's impact on restoration in the Sahel has been greater than that of all national and international experts taken together. Think about that. Billions of dollars. PhDs from the world's top universities. State-of-the-art agricultural technology. All outperformed by an illiterate farmer with a shovel and a bucket of manure. So, if Zai is this effective, why did we stop using it? Because there is a reason ancient agricultural wisdom disappears. And it isn't because it stops working. It is because it doesn't make money. Zai pits require zero purchased inputs. No fertilizer from chemical companies. No seeds from agribusiness corporations. No machinery from equipment manufacturers. Just local soil, local manure, local labor. The global fertilizer market is worth over $200 billion annually. In the Sahel, farmers who use Zai need zero synthetic nitrogen. The termites provide it for free. During the colonial period, European administrators called this primitive gardening. They discouraged it in favor of cash crops like cotton and peanuts, crops that required inputs, crops that kept farmers dependent. Fast forward to the 1970s and the 1980s. The international development industry descended on the Sahel with billions in aid money. They brought tractors, irrigation systems, chemical fertilizers. The projects failed, repeatedly. But here's what nobody talks about. In 1990, 13 farmers who visited Yakuba's fields went home and started using Zai. That year, there was another drought. Only the Zai farmers had reasonable harvests. Did the international aid organizations shift their approach? No, because you can't write a grant proposal for teaching farmers to dig holes with local materials. You can't justify consultant fees. You can't create ongoing dependencies that require perpetual funding. And even today, companies are trying to mechanize it. They are developing motorized zanas to dig the holes. Tools that cost money. Tools that require fuel. Tools that break. The original technique needs a shovel. That is it. This is how traditional knowledge gets erased. Not through malice. Through economics. Through the systematic privileging of techniques that generate profit over techniques that generate food. Yakuba Sawadogo said, If you stay in your own little corner, all your knowledge is of no use to humanity. So he taught anyone who would listen. For free, for 40 years. And you can do it too. If you have compacted soil, if you have dry land, if you have water runoff. This is the blueprint. Wait for the dry season. Dig a pit about 20 to 30 centimeters wide or 8 to 12 inches. Go about 6 inches deep. Put the soil you dig out on the downhill side of the pit. This creates a berm that catches water running down the slope. And here is the secret. Put a handful of compost or manure in the pit. It does not just fertilize the soil. It calls the termites. It invites the biology back into the dead earth. Wait for the rain. Then plant, corn, beans, trees, whatever you need. The results are measurable. Soil moisture doubles. Roots go twice as deep. 
and once established, the pits stay productive for years. In year one, your yields jump. In year five, your water table rises. In year 20, you have what Yakuba had, a forest where there was a desert. Yakuba's forest is called Bangar Raga. In the Mossi language, it means the forest of wisdom. It is still there today. You can see it on satellite images, a patch of deep green in an ocean of brown. His family is still fighting to protect it from developers who want to pave it over. But across Africa, millions of farmers are digging holes. Not because an aid agency paid them, but because one man proved it worked. A village elder once told Yakuba, a man who digs holes is as useful as a man who hangs himself. Forty years later, that madman's holes were feeding hundreds of thousands of people. They called him crazy. They burned his fields. They tried to bulldoze his forest. He kept digging anyway. Yakuba died in December 2023, but he left behind a map. He proved that the desert does not care about billions of dollars in aid or high-tech machinery. It only cares about water. And water, like truth, will always find a way through. Sometimes the most powerful act of resistance is remembering what they tried to make you forget. All you need is a shovel, some compost, and the willingness to dig when everyone else says you are insane. If this vault opened something for you, subscribe to Nature's Lost Vault. The next vault opens soon.